Hey, how's everybody doing? Good? Anybody there? I am... Whew. What a day. Been running around like a crazy person, having so much fun, doing so many things. Um, I'm glad you're here. I'm really glad you're here. We're going to read a classic book today. Um, so, of course, I have my friend Max with us. Okay. He's my little buddy, Max. And he is awesome. And he's going to sit right over here and, and listen to the story, too. And um, I just wanted to tell you that if you notice, I wear different hats. And this hat is a tribute to a friend of mine, Tom Tursich. And Tom is doing something. He's walking around the world with his dog, Savannah. And you can follow him on social media, Instagram and Facebook at The World Walk. And it's really fascinating. And if you can support him, that's even better. He happens to be stuck right now. And his next step, he's, he's in year number five of seven. His next step is um, <clears throat> Mongolia Desert. The Mongolia Desert. So today we have Streganonna. This is a classic book. And it was written and illustrated by Tommy DiPiola. And Tommy actually passed away this week. In his life, he wrote over 260 books. And um, yeah, he recently just passed away this week. And uh, he was a classic. And so we are Italian, myself and my wife. And we love pasta, spaghetti. You know, we love it. We love, 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 love pasta. And this book is about pasta. And our daughter, my favorite daughter, Erin... She really um, hates pasta, and I think she does it to be a rebellious young daughter. But let's get started. This one's a little hard to follow along with the pictures, but we have an outstanding camera woman, Margaret, and this is Streganona. Let's see if we can get out of that sun. My Tommy Di Piola. In a town in Calabria, a long time ago, there lived in a little old lady. An old lady, everyone called Streganona, which meant Grandma Witch. Although all the people in town talked about her in whispers, whispers, they all went to see her if they had troubles. Even the priest and the sisters of the covenant went, convent went, because Streganona did have a magic, magic touch. And this book was written for Franny and Fuffy. Streganona, what she could cure a headache with oil and water and a hair a pin. And she made a special potions for the girls who wanted husbands. Oh, yeah. And she was very good, very good at getting rid of warts. She was good at getting rid of warts. If you don't know what a wart is, ask your parents. But Streganona was getting old. Oh, yeah. And she needed someone to help her keep her little house and garden. So she put up a sign in the town square. She needs somebody to help her. Hmm. And Big Anthony, who didn't pay attention. Oh, yeah, he went to see her. Anthony, said Streganona, you must sweep the house and wash the dishes. You must weed the garden and pick the vegetables. You must feed the goat and milk her. And you must fetch the water. For this, I will give you three coins and a place to sleep and food to eat. Oh, grazie, said Anthony. The one thing you must never do, said Streganona is touch the pasta pot. It is very valuable, and I don't let anyone touch it. Oh, see, si, yes, said Big Anthony. And so the days went by. Big Anthony did his work, and Streganona met with the people who came to see her for headaches and husbands and warts. Big Anthony had a nice bed to sleep in next to the goat shed, and he had food to eat. Well, one evening, when Big Anthony was milking the goat, he heard Streganona singing. Peeking in the window, he saw Streganona standing over the pasta pot. She sang, A bubble bubble pasta pot, boil me some pasta nice and hot, I'm hungry and it's time to sup, boil enough pasta to fill me up. And the pasta pot bubbled and boiled and was suddenly filled with streaming hot pasta. Then Streganona sang, Enough, enough, pasta pot. I had my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. How wonderful, 
said Big Anthony. That's a magic pot for sure. And Streganona called Big Anthony in for supper. But too bad for Big Anthony because he didn't see Streganona blow one, two, three kisses to the magic pot. And this is what happened. The next day when... Did we skip a page? No. The next day when Big Anthony went to the town square to fetch the water, he told everyone about the pasta pot. And naturally, everybody laughed at him because it sounded so silly. A pot that cooked all by itself? You better go and confess to the priest, Big Anthony, they said. Such a lie. And Big Anthony was angry, and that wasn't a very good thing to be. I'll show them, he said to himself. Someday I will get the pasta pot and make it cook, and then they'll be sorry. That day came sooner than even Big Anthony would have thought, because two days later, Streganoni, Streganona said to Big Anthony, 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 I must go over the mountain to the next town to see my friend, Strega Amelia. Sweep the house and weed the garden, feed the goat and milk her, and for your lunch there are some bread and cheese in the cupboard. And remember, don't touch the pasta pot. Oh, yes, yes, Streganona, said Big Anthony. But, but inside his head he was thinking, my chance has come. And as soon as Streganona was out of sight, Big Anthony went inside, pulled the pasta pot off the shelf, and put it on the floor. Now let's see if I can remember the words, said Big Anthony, and Big Anthony sang, Bubble, bubble, pasta pot, boil me some pasta nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And sure enough, the pot bubbled and boiled and began to fill up with pasta. Ah, said Big Anthony, and he ran into the town square and jumped on the fountain and shouted, Everyone get forks and plates and plates and bowls and platters and pasta for all at Streganona's house. Big Anthony has made the magic pasta pot work. Of course, everyone laughed, but ran home to get forks and plates and platters and bowls. And sure enough, when they got to Streganona's, the pasta pot was so full, it was beginning to overflow. Big Anthony was a hero. He scooped out pasta and filled the plates and platters and bowls. There was more than enough for all the townspeople, including the priest and sisters from the convent. And some people came back for two and three helpings, but the pot was never empty. When all had their fill, Big Anthony sang, Enough, enough, pasta pot, I have my pasta nice and hot, so simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. But alas, he did not blow the three kisses. He went outside, and to the applause of the crowd, Big Anthony took a bow. He was so busy listening to compliments from everyone that he didn't notice the pasta pot was bubbling and boiling until a sister from the convent said, Oh, oh, Big Anthony, look! And pasta was pouring out of the pot all over the floor of Streganona's house and was coming out the door. What? Big Anthony rushed in and shouted the magic words again, but the pot kept bubbling, and he <coughs> took the pot off the floor, but pasta kept on pouring from it. Big Anthony grabbed the cover and put it on the pot and sat on it, but the pasta raised the cover, and Big Anthony as well, and spilled on the floor of Strega Nona's house. <gasps> Stop! yelled Big Anthony, but the pasta did not stop. And if someone hadn't grabbed Big Anthony, the pasta would have covered him up. The pasta had all but filled the little house. Out of the windows and through the doors came the pasta, and the pot kept right on bubbling, 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 bubbling. The townspeople began to worry. Do something, Big Anthony, they shouted. Big Anthony sang the magic song again, but without the three kisses, it did no good. By this time, the pasta was on its way down the road. And all the people were running to keep ahead of it. We must protect our town from the pasta, shouted the mayor. Get mattresses, tables, doors, anything to make a barricade. But even that didn't work. The pot kept bubbling and the pasta kept coming. We are lost, 
said the people, and the priest and the sisters of the convent began praying, The pasta will cover our town, they cried, and it certainly would have had Strenga Nuna not come down the road from her visit. She didn't have to look twice to know what had happened. She sang the magic song and blew the three kisses. With a sputter, the pot stopped boiling and the pasta came to a halt. Oh, grazie, grazie, thank you, thank you, Strega Nona, the people cried. But they turned on Big Anthony. String him up, the men of the town shouted. Oh, yo, yo. Now wait, said Strega Nona. The punishment must fit the crime. The punishment must fit the crime. And she took a fork from a lady standing nearby, and held that fork out to Big Anthony. All right, Anthony, you wanted pasta from my magic pasta pot, Stregonona said, and I want to sleep in my little bed tonight. So start eating. And he did. Poor big Anthony. Ay, 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 ay. The end. So that was Streganona. And we borrowed that book from a good friend of ours. Her name is Morgan. And thank you, Morgan, for lending us our book. We're going to um, read a real short poem, and we're going to be done for the day. But, of course, our shout-outs to my grandchildren, Ethan, Andrew, and J.D. I love you, boys. And Kay in Pennsylvania. I hope you joined us today. So sorry about the time change. And Thomas and James, who live next door. And Cece and her wonderful mom. My good friend Bennett, who lives on the other side of Collingswood here. And Dakota, who's in Pennsylvania. Yeah, kid can ride a horse already. I bet you can, Dakota, can't you? And then there's Silas and Benny, who live way out in Tennessee. And again, we just want to thank Morgan. We want to thank a special thanks to my wife, Margaret, who um, puts up with time changes and holding the camera and puts up with a lot more than that. You guys have no idea. So this is another Shel Silverstein poem from his book, A Light in the Attic. And this is called Kidnapped. Are you ready? Here we go. This morning I got kidnapped by three masked men. They stopped me on the sidewalk and offered me some candy. And when I wouldn't take it, they grabbed me by the collar and pinned my arms behind me and shoved me in the backseat of, of this big black limousine and tied my hands behind my back with sharp and rusty wire. They put a blindfold on me so I couldn't see where they took me. And they plugged my ears with cotton so I couldn't hear their voices. And I drew, and they drove for 20 miles, or at least for 20 minutes, and then dragged me down from the car down to some cold and moldy basement where they stuck me in a corner and went off to get the ransom, leaving one of them to guard me with a shotgun pointed at me, tied up, sitting on a stool, stool and that's why... I'm late for school. The end. Hey, thanks so much. I hope everybody's doing good. We're, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful world. It's windy outside. That's why we did it inside. God bless you all. I love you all very much. Thank you so much for listening. It means the world to me. And um, I just really appreciate all of you. Adios.